today I'm going to talk about computers. <laughs> so nowadays, computers are not a big deal for us, right? We have smartphones, we have laptops in front of us, we have PCs, even our smart watches are smart nowadays. We have uh, VR glasses. So we are very familiar with them. But if we look a hundred years back, what do we see? We see big room-like boxes, shaped like rooms, and that can do the same to additions and multiplications, nothing more than that. And they were used in World War II. So they were a big deal back then, but they couldn't do much more than that. So what was the driving force that brought us from these room-like boxes to these sophisticated devices that we have nowadays? So we I have MOSFET there, but the main thing is semiconductors. So what is a semiconductor? So semiconductors are such materials that are not a good conductor, not a good insulator, <laughs> that doesn't conduct electricity very well, that doesn't even ins insulate electricity very well. So you might ask, what is so interesting about them? They themselves are not very interesting, but if we manipulate them by doping them, it sounds illegal, but it is not <laughs> in terms of electronics. We dope them with different materials, they become a little bit more interesting. And if we sandwich many more of them together, we get different structures that we can use uh, in different applications of electronics. I have one of the most uh, high-end ones here, the MOSFET. So I'm not going to go in very details like how it works and all. I'm just going to go in how it is implicated in our lives. So at first, what is a MOSFET? So it's an acronym. Uh, it is metal that is that sits on top of everything. Oxide, that the layer sits underneath the metal. S for, uh, uh, S for semiconductor, that is the hole of the bulk here. And the rest of the word FET is field effect transistor. This thing is controlled by electric field. That's and this is a transistor. That's why it is called FET. So in total, this is called a MOSFET. So what is it actually? This is a simple switch. We can turn it on or off. But it is not a regular switch that we use in our daily days. Uh, it is not a mechanical switch. It is an electrical switch. We control it by voltage. By applying voltage to the gate, we can turn it on or off. So our PCs communicate with each other by bits of zeros and ones. We can translate it to on or off. And that is that's the thing done by these switches. And there is a big one, but in our smartphones and our laptops, there are very tiny transistors that we cannot see by our bare eyes. Like in a single chip, there is hundreds of billions of them. Now, what is the thing that is driving us? Like on the left hand, uh, on your uh, right top corner, you can see a graph. Now what do, what do we need every year? Like we have our smartphones, but we are always looking for higher end ones. Like we are always looking at the benchmarks. Like we want them to perform better than last year. How can we do that? By putting more chips, uh, more transistors in the chip. So uh, this is Moore's law. Moore says, Every 18 months, every 18 months means every one and a half year, the number of transistors in a single chip doubles. But we do not see our smartphones getting bigger every day, every year, right? How do we do that? By shrinking down this MOSFET. It gets smaller every year so that we can we can uh, put a higher number of them in the same area. But we are now at the verge of uh, the verge of death of this Moore's law, right? We, we are at the limit of atomic limit. <coughs> at the atomic limit of shrinking now, we can barely shrink down it anymore. So researchers like us who are working on material science or electronics, we're trying to find new ways to develop this further. Otherwise, in a few years, uh, smartphones are gonna get boring. So thank you. Uh,